I'm Diana Peacher. I am the chair of the board of directors of the Cancer Resource Center of the Desert, uh, and I'm also the founder of the Cancer Resource Center of the Desert. A small group of people who came together, who understood the challenges that cancer patients face in Imperial County. Um, at that time, we only had one cancer clinic here. Um, they had just opened up uh, a radiation uh, treatment office here. And so the challenges were in simply accessing treatment, deciding whether they were going to go to San Diego, if they could afford to go to San Diego um, for their treatment. There were a lot of things that we understood that our cancer patients were dealing with as barriers to care. And so we came together and made the decision that we would form a nonprofit that would address those needs. Well, part of the framework would be that we would never charge anyone for any of the services that we would provide. Instead, we would rely on our Imperial County community to donate to us and in that way we would keep the organization going. We believed that as our community came to see the impact of the navigational services that we were providing to, to the patients, they would appreciate the value of the service that we were providing and that they would respond to the call. The cost of cancer treatment is truly exorbitant. It truly leads to what has uh, come to be known as financial toxicity. Um, in, in effect, people, once they get into that kind of medical debt, there's no way of digging themselves out of it. At least they can't see a way. And if you're dealing with a cancer diagnosis and you're looking at tens of thousands of dollars of expense, that money that you don't have, um, you're often going to make the choice, well, I'll just forego treatment. Um, and as you said, the gentleman yesterday, that was his choice. And that's somebody who's insured, not somebody who's uninsured. This is somebody who is insured, who is facing these gigantic out-of-pocket expenses. So over the last nearly 15 years that we have been in operation, we have been able to access multiple resources for people in getting the adequate insurance that they need to reduce or eliminate out-of-pocket expenses. And I'll tell you, it's not an easy task to explore every single opportunity that may be available to individuals, but we do it because we know that if we do it, that we may be able to get them into treatment that is going to save their life. And ultimately, that's the bottom line, right? Save a life. Our first research project involved the San Diego State UCSD Cancer Partnership. That was the very first project that we were involved with. Dr. Ahmed, um, our um, medical oncologist here in El Centro, um, was the, the physician that allowed us to be able to do the research of, of some of his patients. And then over time, um, we went from looking at the School of Public Health, or excuse me, the School of Social Work um, at these two universities to now public health getting involved, the School of Public Health getting involved um, at San Diego State University. And that then led us um, ultimately to a special training program um, in Oakland uh, for the California Breast Cancer Research Program, again, where we met researchers from all over the state. And now we were directly involved with an agency, in, an organization that funded research. That then led to our name being floated um, in the state with various um, universities. And ultimately, we ended up with a, a relationship with a um, 
uh, professor at UCSF um, who as a researcher was very interested in um, the stress that comes with a breast cancer diagnosis on Latina patients and was there a way to reduce that stress with um, with a curriculum that was developed so that a peer could provide the education to the uh, breast cancer patient, someone who had been through breast cancer, now helping someone who was dealing with a diagnosis. I mean, the, the, it's been tremendous to see um, the various projects that have come to us because of the California Breast Cancer Research Program. Um, but also then uh, that led to the introduction of other researchers who again were interested in what we were doing here as sort of a unique little gem in this Imperial County desert um, on the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, and it's gotten bigger and it's gotten better under um, Helen's leadership as our CEO. Uh, but it's just amazing for me to see, in fact, she and I were just rem reminiscing, what we did in the beginning and what we're doing today. It's am amazing. When we first started, um, I was the, the patient navigator. That was me. And um, I had a beautiful volunteer uh, by the name of Patricia Medina, <sighs> who I still love so deeply. Um, Patty died of cancer um, several years ago, but what she did was um, support the navigational services that I was providing. She was doing the data entry. She was doing um, a lot of the work. And at that time, now think about, again, nearly 15 years ago, we were using an Excel spreadsheet. I mean, we were, we were just barely getting off the ground, utilizing the national, uh, at that time, the national organization that really was the founder of patient navigation. We were using their documents to help us get ourselves started. Researchers started coming our way and asking us, have you thought about adding this question to your intake sheet? Have you thought about, for example, um, farm workers, have you thought about asking them if they're farm workers or have been migrant farm workers in the last five years? This will be helpful in collecting data for scientific research. And so we immediately added that on. And as we have come uh, to work with multiple researchers all over the United States, we have taken their counsel um, seriously, we have mulled over uh, questions that they have suggested that we add uh, to our intake so that we're, we're prepared when the researchers come along and say, we'd like to study this or we'd like to study that. We believe that by getting those researchers involved and now by having scientific evidence about some of the barriers that our particular community is facing, not only does it put Imperial County in the forefront for research, but it also helps us to clearly understand what people living on a binational border might be going through. And certainly, you know, we know we can we can look at what happens in Texas and New Mexico and some of these other border states um, and compare to what occurs here. So the growth has been tremendous, I have to tell you. It's just been uh, phenomenal. So the rest of the staff, uh, current, then uh, Helen Palomino came on board. And then after that, um, we started growing with other individuals that came in as patient navigators. We would get them certified. Um, and then we started um, bringing in social workers, um, those in the bachelor's program, those in the master's program. And ultimately, you know, we have ended up with um, a beautiful cadre of masters of social work um, navigators. Um, we just recently hired a new navigator who um, has her patient navigation certificate certification. Uh, so yeah, we're we're continuing to, to grow and to change and to evolve. Um, and the researchers that we're now working with are unbelievably smart and interested, interested in what we're doing here and wanting to help us 
to help our patients better. And they truly have made us improve the quality of the work that we now produce. I will tell you that when we first started, we thought we were great. Uh, five years later, we knew we were better. You know, 10 years later, you know you're even better than you were then, right? And the goal is to never stop growing. It's to always think ahead. What else can we do? How much better can we get? Because our cancer patients need the platinum service, right? They need the best that we can give. And if we can grow in one way or another, learn a new technique, learn to do something more for them, then we're going to go for it. So our goal is to always get better, always do more. This organization from its inception was built on the on the concept that it belongs to Imperial County residents. It does not belong to Diana Peacher. It does not belong to Helen Palomino. It belongs to our community. So everything we do, we do in the open so that our community can see who we are and what we do. We have been dependent and, con and will continue to be dependent on our community to support us. But what they are really supporting are those extraordinary efforts that are put forth to be able to serve those individuals, their family, their friends, their neighbors who are diagnosed with cancer. Every single day, when we meet a new patient with their particular challenges, their particular family issues, their particular barriers, then that's the day that we do the very best that we can. And that's the reason why we want to do even better.